today we're in Windows XP Professional and what we want to do is look at some command line tools so the first thing we'll do let's look at the old DOS command prompt this is a 16-bit command prompt and your familiar DOS commands are there recurse out memory version there's a trib and its options clear and let's erase and we'll say yes but anyway th that's you know old 16-bit DOS command prompt what you're probably more interested in or what you want to use is not C-O-M-M-A-N-D but C-M-D this is a command prompt for Windows NT 2000 Professional, XP Professional 2003, Vista 2008 and again some of the same DOS commands here's our directory listing um, make a directory called test. Oh, it already exists. We'll erase test. Yes. And then we'll make a directory called test. Clear. Go into test. Um, oops. Linux commander. Gotta remember I'm in Microsoft. And let's go ahead and create a file. We'll do the old edit command. We'll just add a comment tag in our batch file rim. This is a test. And we'll add a few commands. CLS echo hi mom. There you go. And let's go ahead and save this. And for the name, we'll just call the name of the file test. And we'll save it into the test folder and now I'm going to exit and there's my file test and you know how you have the touch command you can create files in Linux <coughs> and you can view them with cat short for catalog well in DOS you can use type command to do the same thing so I'm going to type test and that's all test says it's just showing me the ASCII text contents of that file type and test and I have the attrib command in this case here I have the att attributes of test and test and if I want to let me rename test didn't give it an extension but let's rename test to test.bat and clear the screen and now it's test.bat with this batch extension or .bat extension it short for batch file now we can run tests as a program and you can see what it does is it clears the screen and says hi mom again I'll, I'll run it again I'm hitting the up arrow from the command prompt if you hit the up arrow you can cycle through commands from your previous commands to your other commands but since I changed the extension to a batch file it becomes executable and it clears the screen and says it just echoes hi mom and if I added echo off to my batch file you wouldn't see the echo hi mom but here's a, it's actually displaying hi mom so by the way hi mom but um, DNS issues a lot of times that will help fix the problem and again now all that I have in my cache are these two items um, I can list my ARP cache these are what you know, remember that you know DNS networking routing takes place at layer 3 the MAC address and address resolution protocol are at layer 2 and this is my ARP cache I could clear it um, if I want to use the command in this case, and now if I look at my ARP cache, no entries are there. This might be a useful tool if you're having problems with connectivity in Windows XP um, or Vista for that matter, 2003, 2008, because the local ARP cache, it, it helps speed things up, but sometimes things go wrong. Let's say that somebody changes their NIC cards and reboots their PC. Your computer could have the old MAC address cached, not the new MAC address, and so it wouldn't be able to resolve you know, that particular computer host name because it would have the wrong, uh, you know, basically the, the wrong MAC address in its ARP cache. So if you clear the ARP cache, then you force it to go out and look for the new MAC address. And not only does XP have that problem, but sometimes switches have that problem before they go into learning mode. Um, MBT stat. We'll look at some of the MBT stat. Um, for a remote machine, really just have a loopback going right now, so I don't have 
not not going to be very fruitful, but we'll at least look at it with my loop back. Um, and let's list some more settings here. Let's do let's look at our local net bias names. And here are my local net bias names. So MBT stat can be a useful tool. These are just some of the command line tools that you'll see. Um, um, GP update. And again, if you know if, if I change group policy or local security policy settings, I can use GP update to refresh. Uh, GP update. Just some of the system commands that are very useful, very powerful um, from the command prompt in Windows. Some other uh, nice command tools would be the ping command. And again, I'll just use ipconfig to look at some of my IP settings and route print to print my routing table. And so I want to try to ping my gateway here. Here's my default. Use the mouse cursor. Here's my default gateway. Went to say 82. And if I get four echo replace, and I've got a good solid connection there. Now let me try to go through my gateway. I'll try to get an outside domain. So we'll try to resolve something to say Yahoo. In this case, again, here's the domain name. It's being resolved to 69147114210. Another useful command, if I were tracking down routing problems or configuration problems, would be trace route. And I could trace route to that IP. So I want to find out all the places I go through to get to 69147114210 uh, 210 there. And so here we go. There's our gateway. And then in this case, you know, there's Yahoo. They're a very useful command um, that you can run from the command prompt to znet command. And here's the syntax. It's a lot like the service command in Fedora if you've used it. Um, with the service command in Fedora, if I wanted to start, stop, or restart the web server, Apache web server, I could say service space httpd space uh, stop or start or restart. If I wanted to stop, start, or restart the FTP server, a very secure FTP server, I could say in Fedora, service space uh, vsftpd space stop, start, or restart. Well, what I can do with the net command of start and stop services and so much more, there's a lot of things I can do with it. Um, you know, these are just some of the options that we can use here. So if we were going to try to net and tell it's not running, but I'll just show you what would happen. It's not started, it tells me. So knowing that that's not started, let's see what happens. 127001, I'm going to tell that into the loopback. In this case, the connection fails. Now I'm going to net start from the command prompt, and it's going to try to go ahead and start the telnet service. I'm going to tell net into my loopback. And yes, and of course, telnet's not secure. It's much better if you're in Linux to use secure shell or RDP in Windows or some you know something with encryption because you're sending passwords out there that if anybody's you know sniffing around with cane enable or some software they can catch those passwords root what am i thinking sorry i'm in linux mode administrator is what we want and there i go i've telnoted into myself and i'll just exit out of there and well, still back in Linux mode, CLS. Um, now, it's not safe to leave Telnet running. That's a pretty dangerous service to allow, you know, allow to run in the background if I don't need it. So, again, I'm going to say net stop Telnet. And Telnet service has stopped. Another fun thing you can do with the net command is send messages. Um, now, you need the Windows Messenger service running, and I don't believe it is running. But let me just make sure on this system. Oh, it was running. Okay, now it, I've stopped it. And by default, a lot of people will turn the messenger service off. It's just safer and you get less annoying pop-up messages. It is kind of useful sometimes around the office to be able to send messages back and forth, but let's see what would happen if I tried to send the message with the messenger service uh, turned off. We'll do net send, and again, I'm going to do the loopback. Well, actually, let me use my IP address. We'll add another command, IP config, and I'm subnet uh, 80 right here in the third octet and 129 is what I've been leased from the DHCP server. So I'm going to do net and send and 
192.168.80.129 and hi. In this case, it will fail because the messenger service is not running. That is a required service. Now let me use my net command, start. I'm going to go ahead and start the messenger service. And I'll just drop a message as soon as it's complete. Starting, 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 right. There we go. And net send, and I want to do my IP 192.168, subnet 80.129, and Here's my message. Message from C Germany 1 and 2 say 80129. Hi, I really like the 3D barrel desktop and Linux. So that's just, you know, just another example of the net command and some of the things that you can do with it. Now of course you can always go to my computer, right click manage, get on here to services, and pick any service. Again, we'll go to Messenger. If I double click on it, you know, it's nice. Uh, nice to be able to access it from the graphical interface as well, and auto I can you know decide whether it's automatic or manual or disabled. I can stop and start it, log on, recovery dependencies, and I can see that for all of my services here. So this is a great place to manage you know start stop, um, automate or make manual services running on your Windows workstation. XP Professional 2003-2008 Vista.